What's up, everybody? I'm Ian Elliot Carter, and this is the Intellectual Controversy Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Intellectual Controversy. Uh, before I start, I'd like to give a shout out to my good friend Ken McCoy for that grand opening we just witnessed. Wasn't that amazing? Yeah, it was. No, it was so, legit. You did a good thing. Yeah, you did your thing. You should have saw like my reaction when I first saw it. Man, I was on the floor, like my jaw was like, <laughs> "What? This is real." I was like, "I want a real story." <laughs> 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 you look legit, man. You look legit, man. <laughs> he does good work, man. Holler at him, man. Uh, Kim McCoy Creations. If you need something good for like a music video or something for like a wedding or something, get at your boy. Um, as always, I have a great show. I have a great couple of guests here. Um, they're both reoccurring guests. Uh, to the right of me, I have my good friend Jemias Richards. Welcome back. Yep, yep, yep. yep, good, yep. To be back. good to be back. Mm -hmm. And coming back from Pensacola, um, visiting the town for a little bit, is another good friend of mine, uh, Jam Jamil Davis. How you doing, big homie? I'm wonderful, sir. I'm Thank glad you're back here. Be back on the show. Oh, man. Both of y'all give great episodes, and um, we gonna try. We gonna try. We're yeah, gonna you guys, this. you guys gave good. Right, you know, back together. Um, I'll give you a little background on both of these guys, though. They both have like the same dreams and the same like goals in life. They just go about it a little differently. I would compare this man to Martin Luther King, and I would say this man is more Malcolm X. So we're gonna get to know, <laughs> understand a little bit of each it's, other. Okay, it's like it's funny that you say that. Like once in real life, because I'm from Atlanta, and you know, birthplace MLK. Mm -hmm. Shout out Morehouse. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, when I went and saw. Malcolm X, I saw it when I was 10. Mm -hmm. What you know, year was that? 1970? Your old I fart. Oh, it's coming. I knew it was coming. I set myself up for it. Mm -hmm. um, but now, nah, man, like, as soon as I saw it, and then my dad made me read the autobiography of Malcolm X yeah. after I saw the movie, mm -hmm. yeah, like, my whole philosophy, I was like, yeah, I'm from Atlanta, but I relate so much more to Malcolm. Mm -hmm. okay. So much more. Nothing wrong with that to the extent. You know. Um, I have a first quick question. You've witnessed a lot of his um, stuff on Facebook, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, you don't post as much as this man does. No, um, no. You know. So I ain't talented like this man, like that. Exactly. So, <laughs> so you guys, this is the first time they're meeting, yeah. and he, they've yes. absorbed each other. We've talked off camera a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, in your opinion. What are your thoughts on the way his approach on um, social justice and um, uh, being equality and all that? Do you, would you say Jamil is somewhat of an extremist, or you think he's going about it the right way? No, extreme. Extreme is a dangerous word. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I think we leave extremists for people who terrorize and try to kill people. That's not what absolutely. He's doing. So extremist is is a dangerous word. I think like you opened it. You're right. I mean, we we look at it from opposite sides of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, like I've said to you before, and I've said before on the show, I think that the way we get to where we need to is with inclusion, mm -hmm. with trying to create conversations where we sit down and we talk. I know we're in a space where we keep getting our lives taken, so I mean, that's so how many conversations are we going to have before we get to there? Right. Um, and that's the frustrating part. Right. Uh, but I just feel like no matter what, I mean, it's kind of like what you said with Martin Luther King. It, it, it's about all of us trying to get there, mm -hmm. not just the situation of one race or one creed. Mm -hmm. So to say he's extreme, no. Okay. Uh, it's not extreme. Mm -hmm. It would be more of, I mean, he, he believes what he believes, and that's, that's strong. Yes, it is strong. It's not how I would go out and, and handle it, um, but there's still pride. I think that's, that's one of the confusions as we probably go along with being black men. Mm -hmm. um, and we have pride. All of us are. We're driven off of pride. Mm -hmm. But I always say that I try to keep mine in check. Absolutely. Pride and passion left unchecked give you ego. Right. Awesome. And ego is very dangerous. When um, you, went, you Like you said, you, didn't, you don't think he's extremist because no. I definitely agree with you. He's definitely not extremist. He's no. not out in the streets throwing fire into banks and, and saying, burn the yeah. mother down. That's, he's not doing that. We're going to have to revisit this conversation yeah, on extreme that, cut. We get that been, point. My mom was going to call him. Right. I was, I was, I was, and that's what I would hope. I would hope that we, would all, we all have people to keep us in check. Right. That keeps us, the pride and passion we have as black men mm -hmm. from 
getting this big ego. Absolutely. Because then we don't listen to anybody. Right. So ha- have you ever feared that um, it's gone close to that? Well, I don't think it's gone close to that, but have you have you had any fears that maybe some of his reddicks might be flirting with that? Do you, The way he handles things. It can be you, flammable. It can be flammable. It can be flammable. I'll say it this way. Um, you have a, a big following as far as people who respect you Absolutely. and people who see what you do and they take to what you say um, because you do have passion and and you will put your neck out there. So one thing I always say as a person is, we should always come in. So I'll say, hey, good job, always putting your neck out there. Because we tend to always speak negatively mm-hmm. before we talk about the positive. Right. But as I say, and something that I thought about, if I was to take a post from your wall and to read it to my five-year-old son, mm-hmm. specifically if we talk about like the coon trend, because that's one of those that, for me, you know, these are words that are, you know, they're flammable in their own. I understand um, why we think it or why we may say it. But I, my thought process is if we're going to go forward, labels are dangerous um, in general. But if I had to explain that to him, he would see it as a potty word. Mm. And if it's potty word, it's automatically bad. It'd be like in my house, you know, saying shut up mm-hmm. is a potty word for him. He says it, he knows he's going to lose something. Right. So... If we are to teach our youth and to grow them further, I, I do believe we have to teach them the lessons of these words. It's like the N word where, you know, there was a discussion on that before, yeah. which is a great discussion. We have to show all sides of it, but we have to make sure we keep ourselves in check too when we use those words because that's when we flirt with danger. Um, um, uh, I don't know if you had something to say that. Yeah. No. I, um, I lately. I've tried my best to attempt to yeah. not really. It's, it seems that way. It seems that way. Yeah. 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 And I'll commend you on that. I don't, you know, don't no. take what I'm saying. And it's no, 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 of course not. Like the issue it seems like it. Okay. the issue becomes when <laughs> there starts to become things that the issue becomes when there starts to become reasons as to why yeah. that might be a that might have a need to get thrown out. Um, no, yeah. I'm agree with both of you guys on one thing. I agree with you more on the label thing. Yeah. See, I've always had a problem with that because I've been called coon a couple of times I and a house negro myself. And I'm just like, recent. even yeah. recently, last night and this morning, I woke up to this ignorant <laughs> dude calling me a coon because I didn't feel Eminem was racist. You know, there's a little backstory about Eminem saying the N-word and calling a black woman the B-word when he was 16 years old. Man's like in his late 40s now. But... We were talking off camera that Eminem was a high schooler dating a black girl, and she cheated on him, and he, you know, he, had, he was mad. The guy is a mad person. Now, let's, let's fast forward it. I don't think Mr. F the Police and uh, Negro, Negroes with Attitude is going to sign a man that he feels racist. Also, that man has done a lot for the black community, you know, more than I guess we can say that. He has. He's hired. He's employed. Well, yeah, I was about to say that. He's, he's employed a lot of black people. Mm-hmm. I just think he he made a mistake. Yes, it was a racist thing to say. Do I think he is a racist person? No. Some people just say stupid things. Yeah. Um, so that's why I get frustrated when people throw it out real quickly, the coon and the thing, because you don't know me. I've done a lot for the black community. See, there's, that's the thing. There's the, there, that's the difference between me placing that tag on someone mm-hmm. and then just people just randomly like oh just, yo yeah it, if talk. you disagree with somebody yeah. you, our conversation yeah. you're a coon that's yeah. what i just like, i get and, and that's and that's where the prop that, that's where the problem lies yeah. for me which is why i've been like kind of like mm-hmm. leaning it leaning it on it now Reflecting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and i'd say like, like um recently like I was just saying, we I agree with you that I, I'm not feeling all that labeling and stuff. But actually, recently though, it seemed like you agreed with him on um, who is that dude from Fox Sports? Uh, Jason. Oh, Jason Whitlock. We were having a conversation. <laughs> you were here. We were having a conversation about Jason Whitlock. Oh, we were talking, and this man he almost, he almost called Jason Whitlock in the conversation. I was like, whoa. He made me so, he made me so angry. Like, bruh, like, but I had to I had to step back because even then, like I remember saying to him, I was like, it makes me feel that strongly that I would mm-hmm. say that. Like, for me, the way I am in the spectrum, if I say that, that's like saying the B word. We talked about this before too. Right. Like, I'm not calling him the B word because no, that's you know, once I get there, like it's real for me. Exactly. Like we ain't going back. 
Like, so I just, I mean, but, and, and that's the and that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like, we can throw out, we can throw out names of yeah. people that I I place that tag on, mm-hmm. and we can review their track record and realize, mm, you might you might be right. Like Whitlock, yeah, like that. Well, he's, that goes he's, without saying. He is special. I mean, he, <laughs> he wants to he wants to pander. And I won't even, you know, continue that yeah. state. I'll say this. It's a reason why when I first talked to him, mm-hmm. I talked about I don't say racist a lot. I don't it's it's kind of like the B word for me. Yeah. Because the truth is it's ignorance overall. Exactly. We need to make sure we place that as just ignorance. Yeah. If you don't like someone because they look this way, they feel this way, they say that, who cares? Learn. It's ignorance. So what I mean when I say like coon and you know, house slaves, yeah. things like that. Yeah. It's verbiage that we come up with. That's just dangerous. Right. It's very flammable. And we need to, even though you may reflect before you place it, how are we, you know, if you, when you talked about daughters, you know, goddaughters, yeah. if they were to look at that and they were to ask you, you know, What's what that? about this? What's mm-hmm. this? Explain it to me. How would you break that down to a four or five year old and not look ridiculous? That's a good question. We, we will look like that way. That. How would you do Because I, I was trying to play that in my head. Like, how would I say that to my son? Yeah. Like, oh, uh, what's the name called me a coon today at, at school? What does that even you mean? Know, what's a coon? A raccoon? I, yeah. That's what my son would say yeah. before I explained it. So, to like, you know? how would you, like, explain, not even just coon, though, like, these racial words to a child? Whether it be from the white community or a black community, yeah. how do you... Um, for me, once they get to, like, once we, once we get to, like, that certain age level mm-hmm. where that discussion needs to happen, then you sit them down and let them know, like, yo, these are historical words from such and such, such and such time period. Um, this is what they originally meant, and now for this particular time, for this particular time period, this is what this is what they mean now. Mm. Okay, then why? Oh, and you know, with I would say, for example, I got an eleven-year-old nephew, um, and I know my nephew. Like, eventually, the next question will come. Well, why is this? Why do you feel this particular person is that? Yeah. And then I'm gonna let him know that. And um, my thing is, it's like once we reach that level of maturity, mm-hmm. it becomes a situation of, well, I don't know, Uncle. I might feel this way. Mm-hmm. Or you know what, Uncle? You might be right. Mm-hmm. And then we, you know, and then we go along. We we go along our way. Now, my thing is, is that we all have different, different responsible methods on how to present this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, we should act, we should act accordingly um, in the situation. Um, but for me, now, now on, um, I don't necessarily throw that word out. Um, but you reflect. You know, I mean, you're going to see, you yeah. see a lot of, you know, Train cabooses. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, it's about reflection at the end of the right. day. Like I told him, you 